All right, y'all. We start. There we go. Let's see if the cell phone reception's any better here in the burned tree field at the old bird farm. Hello from Seattle. Hello, hello. Hello from Waverly Hall, Georgia. Let's see if we got any better cell phone service here. I'll wait for some folks to get back in here. Hopefully y'all come and join again that we're on the last live video. And my better service. I've got three bars rather than two right now. Hey, from Australia. Hey, Lisa from Australia. Hello again, Maddie. Let's see, uh, do I have better cell phone service this time? Y'all got to tell me. Yes, better. Yes, better. Amazing what, how many hundred feet is that? I don't know. I don't know. I, you know, I left my going live chair up in the back though. So let's see if we can't just sit on the tailgate. See, there it is. There it is. It's weird though that, uh, you know, the cell phone reception is so bad back in the back of the property. I mean, you know, it's, it's higher up. Ain't no reason that it shouldn't be. But like I said, out here on the farm, my cell service has gone down quite a bit um, here recently. It had like, you know, a bunch of bars of the 5Gs out here. And now it's gone down to where it's on the, you know, just the 4Gs and not that many bars. Like I said, I think there's only like three here right now. I'm gonna see. Oh man, thank you. Vicky says she enjoys the videos with Brent. Hello, Judy. So what we covered on the last live video, other than me needing a haircut, was that uh, Old Bird Farm honey is coming pretty soon. I don't know if I will, uh, if I'll have enough for online sales of honey or not. It may just be, um, have to be like local sales for, for, to start off with, but we will see what happens. Um, uh, you know, eventually I want to be able to do, you know, some online, of course, honey sales. Um, but we are going to have some old bird farm honey pretty soon, which will be awesome. And if you weren't on the last live i'm joined by blue dog over there who's wandering around and annie dog the aussie doodle is around here somewhere annie come here you gotta say hey annie you gotta come in and say hey she's kind of shy i guess oh well I'm sure at some point or other she'll come up and say, hey, but it ain't right now. Um, so I'm sitting in the middle of the old burnt tree field back here. Um, if you were on the last live video that I did, I drove through here on the way to the back of the property, um, which is really amazing because it used to be nothing but a privet and wisteria jungle here. I'm trying to pan real slow and uh, now it's not. Now it is not a privet and wisteria jungle. And I mean, over there, you know, over there ain't even that bad. All it needs is mowed, just like I did on the last little mowing video out here. Oh yeah, I'm planning on spring tooth plowing it. For sure gonna spring tooth plow it. Um, and uh, get, get it down and rip all this stuff up. And uh, it's a uh, that's that'll be coming soon. I'll probably do that in the winter time. Mate. Well, you know, yeah, probably in the winter time. Um, just trying to decide because we also don't want to leave the soil real bare here, um, so it'll all wash away if it rains a lot this winter. I'll, I'll figure it out though. Uh, but you're right, I do need to spring tooth plow all of this and uh, get the wisteria out of the ground. Uh, but if you watch the video where I cleaned uh, behind the chicken coop, I pointed out some stuff that had sprung up from the uh, seed bank 
uh, here on the farm, like just some weedy stuff, not anything we really wanted to keep. Aside from the maypop, the maypop that I accidentally uh, slaughtered was super cool, and I hate that I accidentally cut it. Um, but that was down in the seed bank. I ain't never seen a maypop bloom out here. Um, but when I plowed up there, it just awoken all this stuff, or awakened, awakened all this stuff growing, or that was laying dormant in the ground. Um, and started growing up like our canna lily um, that I'll show you again on the live on this new live in a few minutes um, but anyway yeah so we're gonna we're gonna plow all of this with a spring tooth plow and uh, get it cleaned up but like I said wisteria has not come back here as bad as you would think yes you're absolutely right wisteria will be a life Long, lifetime thing but keep plowing and trying to get the vines out that is the goal that is the goal come here Annie say hey Annie got vetted today she's gonna have to have um, uh, surgery on her eye uh, we found out today um, she uh, her uh, eyelid she's only she's a nine month old Aussie doodle and her eyelid Bottom eyelid is, is turned in, so the eyelashes are on the inside and uh, are touching her eye and irritate her one of her eyes. Um, so she's going to have to have surgery in a couple weeks to fix that. Um, so that's, I mean, she's, she's okay, but, you know, it'll, she'll be um, a whole lot happier, I'm sure, once that surgery happens. Uh, let's see. Oops, sorry, I didn't mean to block the camera there uh jerry the turkey is doing great i just heard the little rooster holler there in the background he wanted to say hey to all of y'all hello jane from illinois hello denise made it made it in made it in the live um so yes blue has a sister i actually introduced blue uh, annie on uh, i think it was the last video that i released um so if y'all didn't watch that, go back and watch it. It was a pretty good one until my GoPro died. If you didn't see that video, um, I think it's titled something about the last video I was able to film before my GoPro died. So it's part of the reason um, that I hadn't uh, released. When is the last day I released a video? Two days ago, something like that. Um, so I'm, I'm way far behind on video right now because my gopro had died i've been using a borrowed one um and i just had to replace that gopro so we got another one coming on the way um the gopro i had it for a couple years you know i i the swamp is actually not that bad it has dried up pretty well um as of right now i think partly it was in just such shock from you know the soil was just or the the landscape was just ruined by this wisteria and um had some like soil compaction issues over there and then just the way the the ground gets has been so covered over uh by the wisteria and then we go ripping it out we tear it up um i have not run the tractor back through there recently because i've been trying to let it heal before i just you know got in there mowing it again we have not had a lot of rain recently uh, and uh and so it's it's been relatively dry i haven't walked through it in probably a month or so um so yeah annie is going to require regular grooming somebody asked um doesn't she require regular grooming uh, well she's she's not going to require like um uh a ri ridiculous amount of grooming um but she's an aussie doodle and so they don't shed like other dogs um so she's gonna have to get groomed uh like i said she's a nine month old um puppy and uh she just got vetted today um i've only had her for about two weeks um she just got vetted today um and uh she's going to now she can i can take her and get her groomed um and get her hair cut because uh they don't um 
shed like other dogs do. They're, they're apparently like kind of hyperallergenic. I think that comes from uh, her poodle heritage. Uh, Uncle Ken is doing all right. I think that he is done with his radiation treatment. Walter was in here and he had also updated it just a minute ago. Um, I'm reading these comments. The swamp may have a lower level drainage from the field south of you. Um, moving on a clay layer that won't let it drain deep and you're right um uh it's uh, uh a lot of it so we had somebody from uh a farm bureau i forget the exact um definition of of what their uh you know what their uh, agency is called um who has come out here and uh, anyway they looked at it for us and said that to them it looks like it's it is water that's coming off of the field uh, that, that you're talking about um, and it's flowing over there trying to kind of um, almost like the land is trying to go back to how it originally flowed through um, I'm uh, I'm, pro I'm explaining this horribly poorly uh, but like, you know, natural drainage, um, whereas when this land was, you know, initially um, turned into agricultural land that, you know, they would have changed the way everything flows. That's what, you know, part of what the terraces do and that sort of thing. Um, so now it's maybe kind of reverting to a natural um, drainage. That's why, you know, it works its way down like that and flows in a way that we don't want it to. And it hasn't historically flowed that way. Um, but anyway, that, I, I probably did not make a lot of sense, but that is the basis of what I was told. Um, could it be a natural spring under there? That has been suggested too, but I think that we, uh, ruled that off. The water goes from the south field into the creek. Yep, that is true. It does. It does, uh, go that way. It uses my field road as a path of, uh, you know, because that's just an easy drainage for it. Um, so it all combines there, then scoots across the chicken coop field that's in front of the chicken coop and goes down to the creek. Um, and then that area just kind of holds water. But again, I'm hoping that it's kind of, um, you know, it started to heal a little bit since we haven't been driving on it. And it's grown back a little bit. Um, it needs to be mowed, but it's not... It's not like it was. It's not all the wisteria that it was. Thank you to Darlene. Good, just in a $10 super chat. Thank you there. Um, so we covered the honey. Honey's coming soon out here on the Old Bird Farm. We can talk about the house. Um, the, the Old Bird Farm house is obviously, I'm still working on that. You know, every time I make a video on something else um, that's not the Old Bird Farm house, people are quick to say oh you must have given up on the house or something like that um or i just forgot about the house or you know whatever people say and obviously i haven't you know um uh, given up on the house but you know as i've said in the past it's not going anywhere it's got a new roof on it and of course the goal is to um keep working on it and uh and you know get the house back in in structurally sound and back in order um, but you know, it's just a, it's a process and there's other things that I do other than, you know, just the house and, and just on the farm, um, there's, you know, a thousand things to do because it, it grew up when I took like, uh, two weeks off or, you know, from, from mowing here, it just grew up like that, like crazy, um, amount of growth here. Uh, but anyway, uh, as to, uh, the house, um, it's, uh, I'm waiting on floor joist uh, to put in the house. Now, uh, I could, you know, obviously buy floor joist for it, but I had been working on a deal to get some uh, floor joist. I think it was, uh, it's about 20 of them. They're uh, 15 foot long, something like that. Huge, huge floor joist, um, or long, long floor joist. Uh, and the deal was, you know, unbelievable. Unbelievable compared to the cost of buying them from um Home Depot or Lowe's and so I was kind of waiting on that to see if um if we could get that um 
this might be a silly question, but do bees hibernate in Georgia? I'm in North Carolina and have noticed that they are starting to disappear slowly. Um, I don't know for sure um, the answer to that question. I'm sure that they go more dormant in the wintertime. Power to that house might burn it down. But yeah, we're, we, the house has to be completely rewired before power goes to that house. Um, if I can ever get the power pole installed out here and wired up, it would be to a service um, or a new box. We would not be going to the existing wiring in the house. Um, hey, and down in Canada, up in Canada, um, east of Maine, Brunswick, Canada. Woodstock, New Brunswick, Canada, sorry. Um, Ricky Dane says, love your videos, you've inspired me to clean up a couple of really old cemeteries on my land here in eastern Kentucky. That's awesome. And the bees hibernate. Rand Allen asked, at the very least, doesn't the siding on the house need to be completed soon? Yeah, um, I think I have actually finally found a source for the siding on the house. Um, somebody, uh, somebody had... Uh, uh, had told me that I think it's um I'm trying to remember the name Harvey Lumber Company here in Columbus, Georgia. If any of your local folks um, are watching, you'll know where that is. Uh, that Harvey Lumber Company actually carries that weatherboarding um, that's on this is the style that's on my house. It's uh it's like half by six um, with four inches exposed, I believe, and they actually have to carry that or they carry it because uh, people that live in like historic districts of Columbus. Um, where it's regulated what kind of siding they have. Um, uh, where it's regulated what kind of siding they have, so they keep it in stock for uh, them so they can put back on the historic siding because uh, Lowe's and Home Depot do not carry that type of siding. Um, so that will be, that'll be cool. I've actually got to get to Harvey Lumber Company and take a look at it and uh, see, see about that, see how much it costs, all that good stuff. Um, so we can get that house resided. I'm actually super excited about that. I had another um, idea for siding it, but if we can do it with that stuff, it'll work a whole lot better. It'll be a whole lot easier than my other idea that I'll tell you about if we don't use that weatherboarding. But either way, it would be weatherboarding and made to look like it's supposed to look. Uh, sorry about the finger in the camera there. Scott's here. Hey, Scott. Looking forward to knocking it out. Yeah, Scott will be, um, of course, helping me. The um drinking game begins again. Apparently, I say um a lot on the lives, so Scott is going to take a shot every time I say um, apparently. Um, Y'all all know Scott. He's in the comments giving me a hard time. Welcome to come to the Netherlands. That would be cool. Uh, yeah, I'm, the porch is definitely in plans to redo. Hold on, I'm, comments coming in really, really quick, really quick, really quick. Um, uh, yeah, the house is like a classic car. Keep it stock and make it like it was new in 1875, roundabout. Um, 1875. And yeah, that's that's definitely the idea of keeping it. Um, in fact, one thing that I've said is, uh, as we've been removing everything with the house, and then as we put it back together, put it back to 1870, 1880 uh, first, you know, and then of course we go from there and modernization and all of that, and um, still not completely sold on you know, whether we're going to insulate or not, because insulation, if you don't do it the right way, insulation is a killer on these old houses. So we'll look at that and doing it the right way and all of that. And the reason that insulation is a killer on these old houses, um, I actually read a really great article on it that, um, that would explain it a lot better than I'm about to, but these houses essentially were made to breathe and wood, wood can get wet and as long as it dries out, it'll be okay. But if it doesn't get the chance to dry back out, it won't be. So um, when you put insulation in there, then the insulation collects water, moisture, holds it against the wood, rots the wood. Um, 
that sort of thing. So you just have to be, you know, mindful when you, uh, when you're, you know, insulating an old house, um, so you don't cause future problems. Um, so we'll just, you know, again, we'll, we'll look at all that. We're not there yet, really. We're, we're more focused on replacing floors. Like I was talking about, and probably got uh, off subject on um, the floor joist. Uh, so I'm waiting. I'm still kind of waiting to see if the deal with the floor joist is going to work out. Um, if it doesn't, then I'll just buy some, of course, and because uh, I'm I'm anxious to get the floor in there. You know, I know that a lot of you guys are anxious to see me work on the house. No one's more anxious for to get new floors in there than me. Um, in that hallway where I had that, uh, or pulled that out, um, get that new floor in there, then I can get that old refrigerator out and continue working through the house. The old bird salve is great, says Sandra. Thank you, Sandra. I'm glad for the happy review of that. Oh, that reminds me. I meant to tell you guys on the video that we've got more uh, old bird farm wisteria scented candles in the eBay shop. Um, I just listed a uh, few last night um and i've got a few more to go in fact the inside of the uh old bird farmhouse smells amazing right now because i have all of the candles in the house because i i kind of use it as a um uh office uh, when i've been doing the ebay stuff and i've got all the candles in the house today um as they're photographed and and, and um uh listed listed on ebay so the old bird farmhouse smells absolutely amazing i wish i could share it with you guys right now because i walked in there and uh, i was like just it's amazing it's amazing anyway so old bird farm wisteria scented candles back in the ebay store um uh cornelia crumb says i bought the sav too it works it really works see that's the thing with the uh with the hold on uh with, with brett says but wisteria is evil that's the thing with the old bird farm wisteria candles is you too can burn wisteria you know you too can can burn some old bird farm wisteria it's in the form of a uh, wisteria scented candle there so i if you've seen the ugly dodge dart um that i've got i, I made a video on it today and yesterday uh, it started yesterday, and I didn't get to finish it until today. And I, it was supposed to be a will this old abandoned Dodge Dart run. And um, I mean, spoiler alert for the uh, for the video. I did not get the Dodge Dart started. Darn it! The ugly Dodge Dart did not start. Um, you'll know all about that when I release the uh, the video tomorrow, probably. Um, but I was I was really hoping that I could get that thing started because the idea would be to you know um, get it operational, uh, make a couple fun videos with it, dry it around, drive it around, and then of course sell the car. Um, it is so wonderful to see you. Thank you, Gloria. Thank you. Yeah, that dart is ugly. It is an ugly old dart. That is for sure. Um, it's that that's what I've been calling it, the ugly dart. That's what I called it on the video. And I made the ugly dart. Um, the old bird used car. That's right. Come and get your old ugly Dodge dart from the old bird farm. I should paint a logo, paint the old bird farm logo on the door before I sell it. You were right about too hot, Scott says Sandra. It was ridiculously hot. Uh, where in the Netherlands would you like to visit? Um, I honestly do not know enough about the Netherlands to even begin to guess about where in the Netherlands I would like to visit. Christy Hughes says he has several cars. I do. I do have several cars. Um, rebuilding the, do the dog trot is the first thing. The house needs a backbone. Yep, the, so... The uh, the the walls of the house and the beams are all sturdy there, and uh, we need the floors back so we can walk through it. I think that's what you're talking about um, with the dog trot. There, what year is the dart? It is a uh, seventy.
73. 73. The garden, the garden did great um, this year. It really did. I mean, for, for a first year um, garden, for the first time that this place has really been seriously farmed or gardened or whatever in, you know, since probably, I'd say, you know, probably the 70s is the last time it was seriously farmed. Um, the garden did great. Scott says he got 28 stitches last time he was in the Netherlands. Um, high maintenance dog, not really. Not really. Um, my dart was a 77, very uncomfortable seats. I think my parents' first car after they got married was a dart. That's cool. Dodge dart. Yeah, you know what's funny is um, there's actually a, uh, there's the, the Dodge dart is historically accurate for the old bird farm. Um, I think it was my Aunt Karen, I think, had a, uh, had an old uh, 70 something Dodge Dart that was out here for a time. Uh, it is a 318 73 Dodge Dart, which is the main reason I got it because it was a 318 car, not a Slant 6 car. I mean, Slant 6 is a great engine, I'm sure, but a 318, I mean, how cool is that? Um, do many people pop by randomly to see your work on the house? Uh, yeah. Yeah, that, I, a handful of people do. Um, in fact, I thought about do, <laughs> I actually thought about putting a guest book outside the fence at the old bird farm. So when people do stop by, because I pulled up the other day um, and somebody had, was out just to take a picture or drive by the old bird farm, something like that. And uh, they drove off when I pulled up. But, you know, if um, I would much prefer somebody that has just come to look at the house or you know to uh to see it to say hey um rather than just um take a picture and drive off i mean it, it, I'd, I'd rather you say hey you know whatever rather than um not say anything it makes me feel more comfortable that way when it, i it's, it weirds me out when people drive by and don't say anything i guess or stop and don't say anything um a guest book is a great idea so yeah so i've been thinking about doing that uh put it outside of the fence on the um on the old uh, old bird farm fence, make a little guest book. That way, people can you know who drive by can, um, or who see it you know from YouTube can um, write down, make a little shack for the guest book. Keeps out the rain. I have to do that. I, I thought about it the other night, and uh, I have to do that because it, it'd be really cool to see um, where all people come from. Because um, somebody drove through from. Uh, Tillman Family Farm is here. Hey, Chris, Chris Tillman. Um, I hope you're feeling better, my friend. Yeah, I want to get one of those little library things and put the guest book in there. Definitely going to have to do that. Um, put up a critter cam and show up, show snaps of people visiting. I do, of course, there's, there's cameras all over the farm, but, um, it, uh, I, I don't, I'm not going to do that. Oh, um, if you guys watch Sidestep Adventures, um, we fil I, I filmed and showed recently an old cemetery. It was the Mahone Ingram Slave and Descendant Cemetery over in Tobit County that was, uh, it was, um, vandalized heavily, heavily vandalized. This cemetery has been out there since, you know, um, 1830s, 1840s. Um, it began as... Uh, burial ground for the enslaved individuals on the Mahone Ingram uh, plantation and then their descendants continued burying there up until I think about the 1960s and if you if you're a fan of of the the old cemeteries and stuff that I film I, I think you should watch that video um, because it it shows how the cemeteries when they are lost like this can be destroyed so quickly because these cedar trees were in there they were hold on let me see, let me see if i can set this camera down mm, come on let's see maybe nope uh, i'm gonna i'm gonna tell you about it um i do recommend go over to adventures into history and uh watch that video um 
because I, I think it needs to be seen. I think stuff like that, there needs to be awareness to stuff like that. I was trying to, I don't have my tripod with me, so I'm having to do this, but the cedar trees were like, you know, this big around. They were old, old, you know, 100 year old, 150 year old cedar trees out there. And this, you know, just jackass went out there and cutting these cedar trees down. Um, and he was milling them up in the cemetery. Um, so a friend of mine uh, named Cecil, he does an amazing job of documenting cemeteries as well around these different counties. Um, and he was out there. Darlene, good. Thank you for the... Um, it says there's a message held for review, but I can't see it. Um, Darlene, good, though. Thank you for the super chat there. Um, so, uh, anyway, um, I just I just got all uh, the comments came in really quick. Um, yeah, so go, go to the... Uh, Linda says you missed that cemetery. We'll go back and have to remember to watch it. I think it's named someone is destroying this old slave cemetery. That's, that's why I titled the video. So, anyway, so... Uh, uh, my friend Cecil Young, who is doing an amazing job of um, documenting cemeteries in, in Talbot County, Marion County, he's putting, he's taking pictures, recording the uh, locations, and creating a book. Um, the, one book he's keeping, and the other book he's donating to like the local, uh, either the the library, the courthouse, or genealogical um, uh, parts of of either. Anyway, so he's, uh, he was out there to go photograph the Mahone Ingram Cemetery. And when he went out there, there was a guy in a truck on the side of the road with a bunch of like wood in the back. And he rolled down his window because he was going to ask the guy if he knew exactly where the cemetery was. He didn't think anything of it. You know, you see a guy with some wood in the back and the guy just took off. Um, well, like I said, he didn't think anything of it. And he kept going up the road and saw why the guy had just suddenly taken off because he was in the cemetery cutting out all of these 100, 150 year old plus cedar trees that had been out there, you know, since they were planted, um, growing in the cemetery. And this dude is cutting down these cedar trees, just dropping them on graves out there, um, leaving a mess, leaving an absolute mess in the cemetery. Um, and the dude who was doing it, um, went so far as to cut slabs out of the cedar trees, you know, like, uh, if you're familiar with that, like, you know, live edge slab of these cedar trees out there in the cemetery. In other words, he was cutting the cedar trees down and then milling them in the cemetery and destroying graves. Um, so Cecil called me that morning and, uh, when he saw that it was happening and said that, you know, somebody's out here cutting cedar trees out of the cemetery and so I immediately got up and started driving out to Talbot County. I called the uh, sheriff's office when I was on the way out there. Um, and uh, I had the sheriff meet me out there. Uh, sheriff's deputy met me out there. And uh, we followed and he took a report of the cemetery. So we put in... Um, my throat's starting to get sore. I wonder if we got anything... Uh, to drink. We put in, what made me think of this is I put up a bunch of game cameras in the cemetery. Um, so I've got to go get those game cameras. I've been checking them, um, but I got to go get them. I haven't seen any people on them. The guy has not been back to the cemetery since. I think Cecil scared him off um, when he went out there, but uh, so I've got to go check the game cameras and to see, uh, what was, uh, what was caught on the game camera. Um, again, I've, I've checked them, um, but no, uh, no person was on there, but we'll see. I saw like some deer on there. I think it'll be cool to go through there and see what all kind of critters were walking through the cemetery and that sort of thing. game cameras get stolen that they do but when you've got enough of them and some of them are really really well hidden and they're cellular cameras anyway um so you know if they do get stolen we get sent the pictures uh scott uh sent a ten dollar super chat different scott um 
Hey, Robert Scott from Upstate New York, longtime subscriber. I always enjoy your adventures. Um, did Waverly Hall Bird Farm area see any Civil War action? Yes, it did. Um, I would uh, go over to Adventures into History. There is a video called, my, my other channel is Adventures into History. There is a video called, I think, um, I'm trying to remember what the title is. I think it's a, there's a Union soldier is buried in an old slave cemetery. I think that's the title of the video. Uh, but Dan Aiken and I went out there and we filmed that video. And he talked about some of the Civil War history out here in Waverly Hall. Um, so the, the basis of that is when the Union Army was coming through, well, they came through Columbus first. There was the Battle of Columbus, which... Um, is the disputed last battle of the Civil War, and the Confederates um, fled. By that time in Columbus, it was just young boys and old men to defend Columbus and the Confederate Army, and the Confederates lost the battle and fled, and uh, the road that went through Waverly Hall was the main road um, back in those days as part of the old Federal Road. I mean, um, it wasn't the, the federal road in, in 1865, but it was still along that path. It was a main road. And so um, the Union soldiers also went that way. But there, were a, there was a detachment of Union soldiers that was separate from, um, I mean, I guess that they were connected to Wilson's Raiders, but they weren't, you know, like uh, it wasn't Wilson's Raiders as a whole like they were in Columbus. Um, that had moved through, but uh, so a couple Union soldiers were in Waverly Hall and they were inside of a house, um, you know, ransacking the house basically um, here in Waverly Hall and the Confederate soldiers who had, um, who were fleeing Columbus caught them inside of the house. And it was just like three Union soldiers and, you know, a, a handful of Confederate soldiers. And, uh, they caught them inside the house where the Union soldiers ran and the Confederate soldiers chased. And uh, it was said that the Confederate soldiers hit the Union, I think, officer so hard in the back of the head with, um, or in, in the back, you know, I guess on the neck with, uh, I guess, a saber that they broke his neck. And uh, then the other two Union soldiers were captured. We don't know what happened to those other two Union soldiers, but they buried the um, the they buried the Union soldier in the old slave cemetery um, to hide his body, basically, because if the Union army knew that you know a couple Confederates had killed a Union soldier here in in Waverly Hall, they'd you know pretty much burned the town down, sort of thing, looking for him. I reckon. Um, so anyway, they hid his body. So and that story has been passed down and passed down and passed down. Um, and there was a, there was a newspaper article written on it sometime after, you know, after the war. But so anyway, in this old cemetery somewhere, there is an unmarked grave of a Union soldier that's buried out there. So Waverly Hall did see um, some Union, uh, some Civil War activity. Um, they came through, they hung a, they hung a couple plantation owners by their thumbs as a method of torture to, um, try to get them, to tell them where all the, you know, money was or that sort of thing. Um, that story, we, we've told that story. Um, if you go look at the video, I think it's actually titled Hung by His Thumbs. Um, Dan told that story and, uh, then with the birds... So the birds um, actually have a whole thing in the uh, old Harris County history book, and I think the Waverly Hall history book as well. Um, the Waverly Hall history book was written in 1945. Uh, they have a story in there that says that the foxhole was not a new invention to World War One, in that um, the bird's grandmother, because the the grandparents, I think, kind of raised the bird boys here, um, the bird's grandmother dug a foxhole and hid the two bird brothers. That was James Henry and Archie Bird in the foxhole because she was afraid that the Union Army would uh, kidnap them, basically, when they came through um, Waverly Hall. 
So, you know, interesting. I mean, it's really interesting. You got to think about growing up, you know, um, just in, in that time is just so interesting because the, you know, the birds lived, they were children when the civil war happened and died in the, uh, twenties and thirties, I believe. Um, so it's just interesting to think, you know, about growing up during that time, during that time of war. And of course, immediately after the war as well. So to answer your question, that was a very, very long story. To answer your question, yes, there is civil war history here in Waverly Hall and connected to the old bird farm. Now this particular land that we're standing on right now is the bird farm of 1870, 1880. Um, oh, there, there, I was just, Looking for the dogs. They're the dogs. Um, anyway, this this bird farm that we're standing on right now is the um, old bird farm of uh, 1870, 1880. Prior to that time period, this was all part of the Thomas Whitehead Plantation. Um, and, uh, and, it, and the birds didn't acquire it till later. Sandra gotta go. She says, and she sends a $10 super chat. Thank you, Sandra. We'll see you later. Um, the foreman is on a break. Okay, let me see if I can't catch up here because I know I just rambled on about the, uh, the other Roberts here. Hey, other Robert. Uh, did I, yeah, I did do a video on that story. It's on Adventures into History. If you're not subscribed to my other channel, Adventures into History, and you're interested in history, please go subscribe. Um, Sandra asked, where is the... <laughs> so, um, if you didn't see the video with the electric bike, the last electric bike video that I did, I'm trying to remember what it was called. Um, but it was really fun. We, uh, Brent and I filmed it along with Demon Dizzle, his son, and we filmed a really fun electric bike video. Um, I did a lot of really fun stuff with the editing that I think was pretty cool. So check it out if you haven't seen it. Anyway, Sandra Davidson had asked, where's the scary e-bike adventure I mentioned early in the summer? That's, that's still coming. That's still coming. I, I'm saving that for the month of October. I want to get on um, one of these electric bicycles and ride through Rough Edge, which is purported to be haunted. So I kind of think of it as, you know, alone on an electric bike through Rough Edge will be a fun video. I'm trying to get back to the new comments. Uh, the sinkhole. Question about the sinkhole there. I'm, I'm trying to catch up. Um... We have not gotten the sinkhole filled in, but there was some more dirt delivered for the Waverly Hall sinkhole. Um, so as soon as uh, we're going to get in there and fix the drain, um, and as soon as we do that, then we will uh, we'll, f we'll fill it in, of course, which we'll use the Kubota bucket to, you know, fill it in, which should be fun. I think that's the plan. Um, I'm actually going to do another video on the famous Waverly Hall sinkhole here in the next I'll try to film it tomorrow because I want to I didn't ever show what the problem is with the sinkhole in great deal on, on video so I want to show that and then we'll kind of follow the um the old ditch that's behind the sinkhole that carries the water the rest of the way away kind of explain why the sinkhole is there how it used to be um I'm gonna I've got some historic pictures of Waverly Hall that show the old ditches so I'll put that in the video it should be super interesting actually um I know you think you know maybe a sinkhole is not the most interesting thing in the world but with the history of how the town was laid out and everything I think it will be interesting plus I want to walk down the ditch and uh because the the old ditch is is very very neat um very old um trying to catch up trying to catch up hey from winston georgia i've never been to winston georgia uh is it smoky there i don't know it is not it is not clear blue skies the camera may be a little foggy here 
because I got the sun facing it. It may look like it. Laura Larson says, hey, Robert, been a while. Um, am I going to plant, Sherry asks, am I going to plant more fruit trees like apple? Um, I believe that fall is the ideal time to plant fruit trees. I Correct me if I'm wrong on that. I believe that's the time. Obviously, I did not follow that with the peach tree. We're going to try, we've been on this live for 45 minutes, um, so I'm going to try walking up towards the front of the house. Hopefully I don't lose service. Again, I'll show you the, the original peach tree. It's absolutely amazing um, how big it got this year, and this is the perfect time to do um, a kind of update on that sort of thing. First, we're going to walk over here to what I believe has been identified as the canna lily. And uh, take a look at it. Blue is leading the way. Blue and Annie. Say hey, Blue. Say hey to everyone. Say hey, Annie. Annie ain't too sure. Oh, she's coming up. So this is the eye that we're going to have to get surgery on. Um, you see, it's, it's kind of goopy right now. And her eye is very red. Um, so her bottom eyelid, it's a, um, it's a, what did the vet say, congenital um, thing. Uh, so her bottom eyelid is turned in and the eyelashes um, touch her eye and irritates it. So she's going to have to have surgery to correct that um, in a couple weeks. And she's going to have to wear the cone. Um, so, you know, we'll hope that goes well. Poor Annie. Um, anyway, uh, so this is the canna lily. I believe that it's been properly identified as a canna lily that has grown up here on the old bird farm. The servants' quarters used to be right there. Right? Right there. Servants' quarters used to be right there. So this was planted in the yard of the servants' quarters. And it's laid there dormant for who knows how long, you know, until um, we plowed this area. This is, this is, you see all the wisteria vines that we plowed out of the ground. A lot of people talk about making um, walking sticks out of this wisteria, but it's, uh, once, once it starts to dry out, it really breaks up easy and it wouldn't be, wouldn't be any good for anything. This mosquito bit me. I need some of the old bird farm. Sad for that. Don't I? It itches. Old bird farm salves are in the eBay store, by the way, along with uh, the old bird farm wisteria flavored. I like saying flavored candles. Don't eat, don't eat them now. But uh, the wisteria scented candles. A whole new run of those. <coughs> Excuse me. Whole new run of those are in the eBay store now, and I've got to list some more too. Um, so I don't know what we're saying. We, this is the area that got plowed. Hey, Mr. Rooster. I don't know what this little prickly guy is, but it's come out of probably the seed bank. Look at that. Tell me what that is. It's uh, probably just a weed, but look at it. That's an interesting plant right there, ain't it? Huh. I don't know what that is. Don't know what that plant is, but tell me if you know. Uh, like I said, I reckon it was in the seed bank. Someone said the picture's blurry. I hope we're not. Um, I don't think it. someone said pompous grass, fancy weed. That's probably what it is. It's just a fancy looking weed. Um, I don't think it's pompous grass, so... Um, I don't know. It'd be interesting to know. Um, I, uh, I don't know what that is. I'll, I'll try to find out. I, I'm, um, the username is Dolo the Great. Is, did I pronounce that the right way? Um, asked about the peach tree. Peach tree's in the front of the, uh, property, so I gotta go back over there. I'm walking that way. Walking that way. There's, anyway, um, there's the, all this wireweed stuff that's grown up 
where we removed all the wisteria and this stuff. I mean, there must have been thousands and thousands or, or millions of um, of uh, these seeds in the ground. Someone asked, am I going to um, metal detect the old uh, slave house? So I'm assuming that you are talking about the servants' quarters. It was out here, and that that was was a servants' quarters post. Civil War, um, 1870s um, build probably, um, and I have metal detected back there. Um, I found on some of my metal detecting videos were right here, so the servants quarters is over there. And uh, oh, did I miss something? Walter said earlier he was doing good. Um, that's uh, probably about Ken. Um, Ken is doing, yeah, he is doing good. You know, considering, um, uh, someone had just said something I wanted to answer. Oh, any tobacco growing out there? None that I have, none that I've seen. Um, this was, we know for a fact that the birds grew cotton here. Um, and uh, so I don't know if they would have grown tobacco. Did servants live where they worked at that time? Um, so, in the servants' quarters, I know, and, and I've forgotten, I have to ask again who lived in the servants' quarters because there is a fella here that knows um, who lived in the uh, servants' quarters. Uh, and I think that, um, obviously, they, they would have worked here at the farm um, as well, but I, I think that they worked somewhere else too, maybe... Maybe a lady that was a teacher. Hold, hold here, Annie. I'm gonna shut the gate. Did you see the short I made where I pushed that tree over? I gotta finish cleaning it up. That was a pretty cool little short I made, I think. I think it was at least. We're walking over here to look at the uh, peach tree. And show you how the uh, the three-year-old peach tree, um, or I planted it I, two or three years, probably two years ago, I planted um, this peach tree here. And boy, this year did it get big. Look at that. Annie, hey, stay there so people can see how big it is. I mean, that's a proper size peach tree now, you know, for, for a long time, it was, uh, for the, for the first two years, first year, something like that there, maybe you can see it behind me here, maybe, um, it stayed, you know, pretty small, like, you know, close to the size that it was when we planted it, I figure, but now it's, um, now it's, it's really gone up. This is the hibiscus, the old bird farm hibiscus growing out here. Look at that. So I actually Hmm, tasty. Linda asked what the peach tree needs to have peaches. So I would have had peaches this year, but we had that late frost here in Georgia. And it killed all my, killed all my peaches. So we, we could have had peaches, but nature had other plans for us. These are the other, peach trees. Now these trees grew just straight away this year. You know, I actually hadn't, I gotta pull the morning glories. If you've seen some of my recent farm videos, I've talked about how many morning glories are out here and they've gotten in this tree too. They were down in the seed bank and they've been awakened up. <laughs> the other Robert, the other Robert says, can I have my gas credit card back? Yeah, if you get back to work, other Robert, I'll give it back to you. You gotta, gotta make some more videos though. Um, 
anyway this these are the two peach trees that i planted this year this one got really big this year though this was uh this peach tree was head height when i planted it and look how much it grew I, you know i haven't noticed that honestly um until i just walked over here our other one has grown quite a bit as well and it's got some wisteria growing on it see i'm gonna have to do something about that then there's hibiscus right behind it it's not quite as impressive as the other one i am itching right now i said a mosquito bite me what is this what kind of pretty flowers do we have over here Karen Childers says it was just a stick. The, uh, where's it at? The peach tree back there. It really was. What is what is this? Some kind of flower. Oh, is this zinnias? Look how tall these zinnias are. There's the barbed wire fences right there, and the ditch of doom is over there. Look at that. These are. Hold on. We gotta flip the camera back around so I can show you how tall they are. Look how tall they are. And they got some really tall wire weed growing in them too. There we go. Cool. And uh, I don't think uh, we cleaned up the uh, zinnia flower patch in front of the house too. Little baby old bird farm okra for snacking on. Hopefully there wasn't a bug like chilling on it. Tasty. <laughs> Someone said the other Robert, as soon as you pay off the bill, it's in the new contract. That's right. That's right, brother Robert. Read the contract. Uh, let's see, what was I? I was gonna show you all the zinnias. Well, I'll show you the walnuts on the tree sometime. I'll do it now. Um, I'll do it now. I got to get back there because that's back there, but I got to walk back there anyway because uh, that's where the truck is. So the sunflowers have all died. Yeah, I, I've, I'm about to go get the sap too. It's in the truck. Um, the sunflowers have all died that were growing along the fence line here. Annie dog. Oh look, we get to look at the moonflowers. They're blooming right now. How cool is that? I should have should have started the video out here in the front. Moonflower. Look at that. Yeah, morning glories are the new wisteria. Um, when I did the video on that, <coughs> the, um, the morning glories, excuse me, <coughs> people uh, were saying they're invasive and I mean, you're right. They are. It's not something I particularly welcome out here. I haven't even really seen them blooming. Um, you just see the, you know, the, the amount of them. Here is... Spider lilies, it's spider lily season here in Georgia. And they are growing everywhere. Now, we may um, lose signal for a minute because we go in the house. So bear with me if I do. Look at this. This is the trifoliate. Do y'all remember when I planted the trifoliate orange tree here at the old bird farm long ago? Long, long ago. Let me see if I can. Well, there we go. There it is. Look how tall it is now. It's head high. The thing was like, you know, that big when I planted it. And of course, the concrete wall here is completely covered in wisteria again. We just, we won't even, 
you won't even look at that. Uh, yeah, by the Linda remembers by the wall. So I'm gonna walk into Birdhouse. Hopefully, the signal will hold out. Not not hopeful, but I figured I'd show you. Hold on, hold on. Bear with me. Okay, hold on. Are y'all still there? Mysterious scented candles for you right there. It smells like the whole house smells like those candles right now. As soon as you walk in, um, pretty cool. Pretty cool. They smell great. At the end, someone's talking to the other Robert in the comments says, did you get your new winter shirts in yet? It's he, the other Robert. The other Robert actually, I think he does have a new shirt, but you got something. I've, I've got the other Robert's only, sh only shirt still, still holding it hostage. He's got to create, you know, a bunch more videos before I can give it back to him. So I told you today, I think I said it on this video today. I started out working on the old ugly Dodge Dart and the goal for today was to um, get this car running in operation so the the plan for this dodge dart is to get it running it's supposed to you'll hear about it on the video i'm going to release a video tomorrow it's supposed to run get it running drive it around make a couple videos with it have some fun with it and sell it so we started that today and there we are look at that nice rebuilt carburetor on there Nice fuel pump. This 318 only has 40,000 miles on it. So, you know, this is a... Uh, here, I'll show you the inside of it, too. The inside, of course, needs to be cleaned out, but... There's the inside. And there's the torn-up seat. That is one ugly car. It sure enough is. This is the ugly Dodge Dart. It is, but it will be fun. And then someone will want it for either the engine, because it's a 318. Annie, come here. Come. Annie, come. Come on. Annie. Hold on a second. Come. Come. Come on. Oh, Annie. Annie went out the gate. You can't do that, Annie. You cannot do that. Where are you at? You can't do that, Annie. Got to stay in the yard. She was standing by the road. Looking, just looking. We were teaching her. We teaching her here on the old bird farm to stay in the gate. And she came right back, thankfully. She wanted to see what was going on out there. Yeah, when you're four, legs children don't listen. All right, what were we... What were we talking about? Were we talking about the, uh... Dodge Dart. Woo wee that's... One ugly car, sure is. It is. Um, someone wishes they had their 65 Fastback Mustang still. Okay, I'm, I'm getting back to now. Okay. Um, the dart. The old ugly dart. Yes, Linda, I'm, I'm headed back to the walnuts on the tree, and then we're going to end this live video. Come on, Ann. In blue.
which is this. I've got a message. What is going on here? Why is it not working? I, I cannot see what's... If something came in, but it said message is hidden or held for review or something like that. Three on the tree. This, the Dodge Dart is a, uh, it's an automatic. It's an automatic. It's a, uh, one of those, uh, it's probably like a 727 or something behind the 318. I'd imagine. I don't really know that much about the Mopars. But anyway, it's only got 40,000 miles on it. And, uh. Once it's a run and driving car, someone will want it either for the car or for the engine, but it will be fun to play with for a little bit, get it running, sell it and move on to the next. I was trying to get one of the uh, walnuts to drop, looking for something to hit them with. Yeah, there they are. So there it is. There's the old bird farm. Black walnut tree. And that's gonna do it for this live video on the old bird farm. We've been on live for an hour and six minutes. And we are about to end today. Hope I've answered everyone's question. Sorry if I missed your comments on here because uh, they've been coming in pretty quick but to sum it all up we still out here doing stuff on the old bird farm we ain't forgot about the farm we playing having some fun with Brent at the abandoned shop and we ain't forgot about the house And we're gonna do it all still. So I had to get some of the Old Bird Farm sponsored moment heel and salve, which I left inside of the truck and let it melt. It smells really good. I'm itching right here because a mosquito got a hold to me. Finally got it on. All right, the geese are flying over. Well, I totally missed it. The geese are flying over, but so that means it's time for me to go. We will see y'all later. I'll come to you live again soon. And I uh, hope y'all have a great day. Thanks for tuning in and listening to me just ramble and everything. I hope y'all enjoyed it. And uh, I'll be coming to you with some more really cool videos. I'm going to get a new GoPro in and we're going to be set. I'll see you next time.